for women with breast cancer and ovarian cancer, they're losing a part of themselves with surgery that feels very much a, a part of their identity as a woman. And also losing your hair at the same period can be very traumatic in much greater ways than I think we appreciate. I'm Hope Rugo. I'm a breast medical oncologist and professor of medicine at the University of California, San Francisco's Helen Diller Family Comprehensive Cancer Center, where I'm also director of breast oncology and clinical trials education. How are you doing? I'm well, Dr. Rugo. Good to see nice you. Nice to see you. What a nice sweater and cow. So when you get chemotherapy, in addition to killing the cancer, you kill at a slightly slower rate uh, some of the ability of the follicle, the hair follicle cell, to make hair. If you look at electron micrographs of the hair, uh, when it's uh, coming out of the hair follicle with chemotherapy, it actually narrows. So you can see if the hair follicle was really damaged by the chemotherapy temporarily, that it's gonna really make a kind of crummy hair. And that hair breaks off, and so you lose your hair. One of the things about hair loss is not only does it change your own feeling about your appearance and make you feel like it, in many, for many people, a sick person, but it changes the way you relate to the outside world. And what's interesting to me is that for most of our patients, that is the single biggest issue, how they relate to the outside world and how they will be able to relate. At the time that a patient came to me and said, you know, I don't want to lose my hair from four cycles of chemotherapy. And, you know, she was in her 30s and she said, I found this scalp cooling works well. well you know, the last time I'd had a patient do scalp cooling, they brought in ice bags and put them on their head and didn't work very well. So scalp cooling was a concept that was developed around the idea that if you reduced blood flow to the scalp and to the hair follicle cells, you could actually reduce the delivery of chemotherapy to those cells and reduce the damage. Since then, of course, the technology has markedly improved to try and keep a steady cold temperature against the scalp, which seems to be really important, that it's not just that you reduce the blood flow, but you actually maybe make the cell less sensitive to the chemotherapy by uh, slowing down its metabolism or division. So I spent one summer on a lot of Skype calls with my colleague in uh, Sweden writing this protocol. And the FDA said, well, I don't think you really need that. Women's hair grows back and they look really pretty with caps on, you know, it doesn't really matter. He said, well, you know, here's these publications that talk about the quality of life issue and it seems to be really important. So that helps the- That helps quite a bit. Oh, that's the good. anxiety mm -hmm. and, and the discomfort, so. Yeah. So we did an institution pilot of 20 patients with stage one breast cancer getting specific kind of chemotherapy. And we met the success of our study. We went back to the FDA, said, look, here's our results. And that led to regulatory approval of the first scalp cooling device in the United States. You could actually uh, fit them based on if you had a flat back of your head or a point of your head or a flatter top of your head, et cetera and the channels are really soft, and the coolant circulates around inside here to keep it cold, goes back to the machine, gets cooled again, comes back. You uh, open it up with the Velcro, and then you can attach it so that you do keep it you know, insulated and also tightly applied uh, to the scalp. So the idea behind scalp cooling, of course, prevent the damage, quiet down the hair follicle cell, reduce the blood flow to the scalp, uh, and preserve the hair. Having a little control in a situation where you have almost no control makes a really big difference for patients. For most of us, hair is part of our identity. It has a huge impact on quality of life, perception of self, and interaction with our community at large.